Now let us solve some of the problems for lesson 3-3 of chapter 3. So, do this quickly. And these uh, problems are of course modeled so that they could be answered for less than 5 minutes and uh, or 5 minutes the, the maximum. So, for question number 1, what type of function is the graph in figure 8-3D? So what do you think is that function? 8-3D uh, is it's an exponential function, right? So this is exponential function. Why could it be a power function? Because it doesn't touch your origin, right? So therefore, this question number one is exponential. What type of function is the graph in 8-3a? This is a function that is oscillating in motion. So it's, uh, as you can see, it goes through periods. So this is periodic. And a type of function like this is uh, sine x, y equals sine x, or cosine x, okay, y equals cosine x, and so on and so forth. Question 3, what type of function is the graph in 8-3f? This is the inverse of a power function, or this can be what I call this. It, it's, it's like x is equal to y squared, right? So it's, a, it's an inverse of a, a, a power function. So that could be y is equal to square root of x. Okay? It's not logarithmic because when it touches the y axis, right? Okay. What type of function is the graph in figure it does 3G? This is a cubic function, okay? Cubic function, it is a power function which is raised in 3. So, E x cube, right? It's a cubic function. Question 5, which, what type of function is the graph in figure it does 3H? This is similar to the logistic function, right? The logistic function, why? A logistic function has, uh, it, it has a property of an exponential function and then levels off, right? So it, it meets a certain asymptote here and it has a point of inflection somewhere here, right? So it's a logistic function. Okay, let's do some real stuff now. So, number one, bacteria problem. 36 college biology students start bacterial cultures by taking equal volume samples from a flask in the laboratory. Each student comes back eight hours later in the day and measures the number of bacteria Y in his or her culture. The results are shown in the table and the scatter plot in figure it does three eyes. So this is the scatter plot. Now let make uh, let me make this more visible to you because some of them are uh, it, it's not really clear. Some some of the points are not really clear. So it's the scatter plot is something like this. Okay. And this is about bacteria colony in a flask. So it's like that, okay? And the uh, data is here. So as you can see, your x is uh, 0 0.6 hours. This should be y. Okay, so let's, let, let's erase that, change it with y. So if your x is 0 0.6 hours, then the number of bacteria present would be 450 and 0 0.8 hours, 446, etc., etc. So as you can see, the, the number of bacteria increases as, as time uh, passes by, okay? So at 8.6, you have 11,042 bacteria, okay? So the first question is, 
explain why explain why either an untranslated power function or an untranslated exponential function could be a reasonable mathematical model for the number of bacteria as a function of time explain why the exponential function would have a more reasonable left endpoint behavior than a power function so first let us answer the initial question explain why okay well there are two functions that could model this uh, scattered plot of the data as you can see the w when you are going to run a curve that should fit this this uh, scattered plots here the most perfect could either be an exponential function or a power function so they have the the, the, the both of them have the, the have the right to be to have the regression function for this scatter okay but the exponential function would have a more reasonable left in endpoint behavior than a power function why because as you can see it, uh, it doesn't go to zero right so the number of bacteria doesn't go to zero and in fact the there is an initial number of bacteria in the flask you couldn't say there there is no bacteria there because if there is no bacteria if the bacteria is zero so at x is equal to zero then you could not get the uh, population of bacteria when it, uh, the number of hours is uh, taken well simply you couldn't get a population for bacteria because there is no bacteria in the flask that's why we couldn't use the power function am i correct so the proper regression function for this scatter plot is the exponential function because the number of bacteria could not be uh, zero it should be non-zero okay as indicated by its left endpoint behavior look at its left endpoint behavior it doesn't go to zero okay here here this portion here does not go to zero right so therefore the answer is both of them but the one that is most likely to have this regression function is the exponential function okay because it's non-zero Letter B, run an exponential regression on the data. Write down the equation and the correlation coefficient. Plot the function and the scatter plot on the same screen. And what else? Sketch the result on the copy of figure 8 3 i So your regression analysis should uh, look like this. Okay, your regression uh, data or the scattered plot of your data using your uh, regression function the exponential function okay so if we are going to use our grapher then the grapher would give us running or pressing the exponential regression will give us y hot is equal to 346.5 Nine two nine one times one point one point four nine seven two x. This is untranslated x. Okay, and the R would be zero point nine eight. One eight. So our R is very uh, strong. It is a very strong correlation. Okay, and graphing the the scatter plot on the same screen will give us like this. Okay, so this is like a, a duplicate of figure dash three i. Look at that. So they have the same scatter plot. Okay. So let us go to letter C. According to the exponential model, how many bacteria were in each equal sample when the students took them? 
What do you predict the number of bacteria will be on the next day, 24 hours after the cultures were started? So we have to get the exponential regression. So our exponential regression is this, okay? And uh, we're, we're going to write it. Here we have 346.9291. So y hat is equal to y hat is equal to 346.9291 and uh, 1.4972 raised to x okay so When the students took them, it means that the time is zero, right? So meaning our time is, this x is in hours, okay? So just to, uh, for you not to be confused, this is in terms of hours. And this is the number of bacteria. So meaning that at x is equal to zero, how many bacteria did the students uh, take into the, the the flask? So that would give us y y hat is equal to 346.9291 times this one, one would become 1.4972 raised to zero. So the number of bacteria is 300 approximately 346, right? Or 347 okay so approximately 347 bacteria okay now what do you predict the number of bacteria will be on the next day 24 hours after the cultures were started so meaning if our x is 24 hours so when our x is equal to 24, that would give us a massive amount of bacteria. Now take a look at this. At 8.6 hours, the number of bacteria is 11,042. So how, how much more when we have like another day? So the bacteria should have grown like, uh, they, they, they have grown much, much uh, stronger and, and uh, more. So at x is equal to 24 hours using this exponential model will give us 346.9291 times, oh, okay, I forgot the, okay, we have 1.4972 raised to 24. So let's look at the massive amount of bacteria. Oh my goodness. That will give us 5,584,000. So look at how this bacteria grows so fast. Okay, 0.3315. Or our bacteria, the number of bacteria is about 5.6 million. Right? Just for a day, there are 5.6 million bacteria bacteria when left cultured meaning they are left there to thrive and uh, the 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 they were actually experimenting on the population so uh, they were they were basically left there okay okay so that's for letter c letter d after how many num hours do you expect the number of bacteria to reach 100,000 okay because we have 5.6 million bacteria here for 24 hours, then we're going to look for uh, the number of hours when the bacteria reach 100,000. Therefore, we will have the untranslated version. So, well, we could still use this, okay? Uh, that will give us 
since we, we got the equation from the untranslated version, but we could still use this one. So this will give us, okay, let's just use this, okay? So that you will not be confused. So we will have 100,000 bacteria is equal to 346.9291 1.4972x okay we're solving for x so 100,000 divided by 346.9291 is equal to 1.4972 raised to x. Okay, that will give us 100,000 divided by 346.9291. Two nine one. That's two eight eight point two four three is equal to one point four nine seven two x. Okay, we use the log now. So log of log of two eight eight point two hundred forty three is equal to log or okay x log of 1.4972 let me arrange it so you can see all of the the terms okay so log 288.243 is equal to x log 1.4972 so x is equal to log of 288.243 over log of 1.4972 so let me get that okay we have log 288.243 divided by log of 1.4972 and that gives us an approximation of 14 hours wow Okay, it's equal to, what happened? Okay, x is equal to 14.03 hours, or it's approximately 14.0 hours, okay? So in 14 hours, the bacteria population will, be, will, will reach 100,000, okay? So that's for letter D. And if you want to check it, just substitute this 14 to the original uh, equation. So substitute x here, and then you should get 100,000 for the bacteria population. Okay, so that's it for problem number one about the population of bacteria. Okay?